What's going on guys? Krusty K's here from the Go Boys Network coming with the MLB Slate Preview for September 24th. Uh, before we hop into this, I wanted to remind you guys you can get all these odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. But let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into this slate. So the first one, Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Detroit Tigers. Ryan Pepiot versus Tariq Skubal. Um, From what I was looking at, there are quite a few games with some rain potential. Uh, this would be one of them. So if it does play, I, I love the Tigers here. Uh, I would go with Tigers my line. Um, probably gonna have to be six Ks in a win. There's I don't have any lines for this game yet. So uh, we'll go Tariq Skubal player performance double six Ks in a win, seven Ks in a win, whatever you want, whichever one gets you even money. Um, that's where I would go. Tampa Bay team, who I mean, a lot of people say they still have a slim chance, but they don't have a chance. Um, this Tigers team very much in it. They're tied for the second wild card spot right now, but there's like a a game in between three teams. So, I mean, they're right there. They have to win. And obviously, you have your ace on the bump. Uh, I want to back him. Google looking to obviously lock down Cy Young, get his team to the postseason. And I think he does just that here. So, give me the Tigers uh, to win this game. Give me three school like I said, six or seven Ks with the Tigers money line, whatever gets you even money. Uh, that's where I would go here. Our next one, the Chicago Cubs taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Justin Steele, who was supposed to pitch yesterday, they pushed him back, so we only have one more start this season. And the Phillies yet to announce a starter. I mean, for me here, uh, same sentiments that I had when I when I spoke on this uh, in the last video. Uh, it's the Phillies. I don't care who's starting. Uh, Justin Steele's not going to pitch long. I don't like the long relief guys in this Cubs bullpen. I think the Phillies get runs. I think they get a win. Uh, this is a team that's, like I said, just trying to keep the momentum going, trying to keep, you know, stay hot heading into the postseason. So give me the Phillies here on the money line. Our next one, the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Jacob Junis versus Tanner Bybee. Uh, that's an interesting spot here because the Guardians have obviously locked up the division. Uh, really can't advance anywhere in terms of seeding heading into the postseason. So you have to wonder how much motivation there is. I mean, obviously, you know, most teams want to, like I said, kind of have some sort of rhythm, some sort of, you know, consistency heading into the postseason. So I do expect them to obviously still, you know, put the normal lineup out, try to win games, all, the, whole, the whole thing. Um, for me here, uh, it's going to be uh, Tanner Bybee, 6Ks in the Guardians' money line. Uh, I just think he dominates a Reds lineup that's been super inconsistent. Uh, we've seen it. And the beauty with Bybee is he gets a lot of his swings and misses in the zone. And that's how you attack this Reds team. Uh, they're a team that is actually not going to expand the zone, believe it or not. They do not chase a lot, but they struggle with whiffs. They struggle with pitches in the strike zone. And it's exactly what they're going to see here from Bybee. So it's just a great matchup for him to rack up strikeouts and a great matchup, in my opinion, for the Guardians' bats to keep it going as they take on Junis, who, while he does have a good slider, it's really his only good pitch. So uh, if he's going to opt to try and throw anything else other than that slider, uh, these Guardians are going to tee off on him, in my opinion. Our next one, the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tobias Myers versus Bailey Falter. It's got to be Milwaukee here. I love Tobias Myers. Uh, been one of the best pitchers post-All-Star break um, in all of baseball. The Pirates team, who even at home, just not hitting well over the last 30 days. WRC plus well, well below league average. I mean, Milwaukee against lefties, they haven't been out. They haven't been that good. Haven't really been even average, to be honest with you. But just a spot where, in my opinion, uh, you have a, a team playing for a lot more than the other and a Brewers team who needs to find some consistency heading into this postseason. So I think Myers pitches really well. I think even if Falter pitches mildly decent, um, this Pirates bullpen, we, we would likely not see Chapman, um, the back end guys in this bullpen. So. I think Milwaukee can get some runs here. Give me Milwaukee on the money line at a minus 145. Our next one, the Kansas City Royals taking on the Washington Nationals. Cole Reagans versus Mitchell Parker. Uh, it's the Royals money line here for me. It's a little juicy, minus 165, so obviously pair it with something else. But Cole Reagans, similar situation with Tariq Skubal. Uh, your team needs a win. You got your ace on the bump. You're facing a, a Nationals team who's just not hitting. Uh, great spot for Reagans to really just dominate a lineup. And Mitchell Parker, I mean, he's had flashes of being, you know, good and the stuff, you've seen the stuff, you know, here and there. But this is a Royals team who's hot at the right time. I think that uh, Parker really struggles in this matchup. Would not be surprised if he exits this one pretty early. Uh, give me the Royals here on the money line. Our next one, the Baltimore Orioles taking on the New York Yankees. Dean Kramer versus Clark Schmidt. I am on the Orioles money line here. I don't know what it is about Dean Kramer, but he pitched against this Yankees team and he becomes Cy Young. So I'm backing him to do the exact same thing. Truthfully, it's a lot of it is because I don't think that Clark Schmidt is worthy of the minus 160 price tag that he's carrying coming into this game. 
Um, obviously, the Orioles have been a bit inconsistent. They're a very tough team to back, truthfully. The offense just is all over the board. Um, <laughs> but for me, it's just a spot where I think they can get it going here. I think Kramer pitches well against this Yankees team who's had success against before. So give me the Orioles a plus money on the money line. Hey guys, I just want to give a quick reminder that new users can bet $5 at FanDuel on any of the bets in this video and win $150 in bonus bets if the bet wins. Now let's get back to the bets. Our next one, the Boston Red Sox taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Brian Bale versus Bowden Francis. Uh, what do you do in a game where the game really just doesn't matter <laughs> to either team? Um, I think you back the better pitcher. So give me Toronto on the money line. Bowden Francis has been outstanding for this Toronto team. Um, I think he is the best pitcher in baseball post all-star break. Uh, sub two ERA. He's carried two no hitters into the ninth inning. Uh, this guy's just been outstanding. And you're going to face a Boston lineup who's not hitting righties right now. So it's a spot where you can really take advantage. And I think Bayo struggles against this Toronto lineup. So give me the Jays here at a minus 130. Our next one, the New York Mets taking on the Atlanta Braves. Luis Severino versus Spencer Schwellenbach. Man, oh man, do I love Spencer. Um, give me the Braves. Uh, I'm just going to back Schwellenbach to pitch well. I think Severino does pitch relatively well, too. I wouldn't be surprised if this game goes under, truthfully. I see the total eight and a half. Feels a little high to me. I'm just going to opt to back the Braves here. I like their bats. I like where they're at. They really seem to come, come alive in that red series. And I like that to continue here against the Mets. Our next one, the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Chicago White Sox. Jack Kachanowitz versus Jonathan Cannon. Uh, so Jonathan Cannon's a guy who we've actually backed a few times and we've actually made quite a bit of money on him. Um, going to the same thing here. White Sox plus a half in the first five. Uh, it's a solely just backing Cannon to pitch well in the first five innings. We've got, like I said, we've gone in a couple times and it, we've been rewarded. Uh, you get an Angels team who's not hitting righties. It's a good spot for Cannon to pitch well, be aggressive in the zone. And when he's able to be aggressive, that's when he's at his best. Uh, we've seen it time and time again against some of these more inferior lineups. He has good stuff. He struggles against the teams that hit well because he's afraid of getting tagged. Uh, this is not the case with this Angels team. This is a team he could be aggressive against. So give me the White Sox plus a half run in the first five. Wouldn't be surprised if they're leading this thing after five. Our next one, the Miami Marlins taking on the Minnesota Twins. Ryan Weathers versus Bailey Ober. Uh, I can't get to the window at a, my, at a, a minus 250 for the Twins as much as I think they win this game. Um, I'm going to go with the Twins team total over. Back them to score some runs. I think Ryan Weathers really struggles in this spot. Twins actually, as of late, have not been hitting that well. Um, interesting because they're obviously in the thick of this postseason race. They are up there with the uh, Tigers and the Royals in terms of the wild card. Against Ryan Weathers, I wouldn't be surprised if they figure it out. Uh, this is a guy who hasn't pitched much in the second half of the season, been dealing with injuries. I really just think he struggles here. And if they opt to pull him early, which, I mean, they might because this game is meaningless to them, uh, their bullpen is not good. So I think the Twins get, get us some runs here, giving the Twins team total over. Wait, before we get back to the picks, I wanted to thank you all for watching. Woo! Friends don't let friends watch videos without hitting the like button. So go ahead and press the thumbs up button and like the video. If you're new here and not subscribed, you should go ahead and do so because we're dropping new content each and every day on the Gold Boys Network. We strive to cover every sport and give out picks and analysis and valuable information for free on the Gold Boys Network. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you can get notified when we drop something new. I'm Brad Thomas. Let's get back to the picks. Our next one, the Seattle Mariners taking on the Houston Astros. Logan Gilbert versus Fran Valdez. I like the under. Um, this is I'm not a big Framber guy, but he has introduced his curveball a lot more. The usage has increased a ton. Getting a lot more swings and misses. I think it works really well against the Seattle team who has one of the lowest batting averages in all baseball. On the flip side, Logan Gilbert is just a guy who's been so dialed in this season. I can't help but back him. You get a Houston team, going to see a lot of quick at-bats. Um, not always the best swing because they do swing early on the count. Do get a lot of weak contact. I think Gilbert pitches really well. Like I said, under 7.5, this thing screams like 2-1 final score to me. Could go either way in terms of the side. Our next one, the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Colorado Rockies. Michael McGreevy versus Ryan Feltner. I'm on the over 10.5. Um, I hate both of these lineups, but uh, you get a couple pitchers on the mound who can definitely give up some Turks, and I think that's what we see here. Uh, you got a, a Cardinals team who I believe, yeah, they're, they're eliminated from the playoffs. Um, the Rockies obviously not getting into the playoffs, so neither team really playing for anything. You might see some younger guys in these lineups. Nice thing about those younger guys is they're definitely out there trying to play, trying to prove something. 
So I think we, you know, obviously those guys mixed in with the usuals, Arenado, Doyle, you know, you're going to see the usual guys as well. Um, might just see some of the younger guys getting some at bats. But that being said, uh, these teams, I think they're still going to try and put up some runs. They're still going to be out there trying to finish the season strong. So give me the over 10 and a half here. Wouldn't be surprised this thing is like, you know, seven, six, something around there. Um, just see a lot of runs in this one here. Our next one, the San Francisco Giants taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Logan Webb versus Brandon Fott. It's the Diamondbacks money line for me here. It's really simple. Uh, this Diamondbacks team, I've talked about them. They're hot at the right time. Uh, the bats have come alive, and I cannot help but back them. Minus 135 on the money line. This is a price solely because they're facing Logan Webb, and that's more than fine. Uh, if you've watched this Giants team against righties this season, they turned a complete mush. 29.2% uh, K rate over the last 14 days, last 400 plate appearances. Uh, WRC plus of 50. And against Brandon Fott, who likes to work quick, likes to work in the zone, I think he has his way against this lineup. Uh, Logan Webb, if you're going to fade him, it's always been on the road. And unfortunately for him, he's running into a buzzsaw here on this Arizona team. They are crushing right. These are the last 15 days, after the last 14 days, last 30 days, whatever you want to look at. Um, absolutely crushing right. He's WRC plus over 120. And this team is loaded with lefties who, again, that's uh, Logan Webb's worst split. So give me the Dimebacks on the money line here. Minus 135 is an insane price. I am all over that. Texas Rangers taking on the Oakland Athletics. Nathan Evaldi versus Mitch Spence. I like the Rangers. I don't love this game because this is two teams who do not care um, <laughs> at this point in the season. So, like I said, I like the Rangers. I think Avaldi just pitches well. You get an Oakland team who has really just kind of fallen off the face of the earth, but you're facing a rain. They're facing a Rangers team who we've talked about all season, just super inconsistent. Um, so, I do think it is low scoring. I lean under if you want to go that route, but really just think the Rangers do win this game. Uh, behind a strong performance from Evaldi as he closes out his season here. Our next one, and the last one on this slate, the Padres taking on the Dodgers. Michael King versus Landon Knack. Give me the Padres. Um, I'm pretty high on the Padres going into, the po into this postseason. Uh, their pitching staff looks really good. The bats are starting to get hot. They're healthy. And in my opinion, uh, Landon Knack is not good. This Dodgers pitching staff has is underwhelming, to say the least. Um, I I think the Padres handle business here and and, and kind of smack Dodger Nation in the mouth. Um, I know that, you know, for a long time, it's always been like a joke that, you know, the Dodgers just, you know, Padres can't be the Dodgers, yada, yada, whatever. But for me here, I don't want to say it's like a chaining of the guard because next, next season it could very well go back to the Dodgers just dominating again. But at this point in the season with the way this pitching staff is for the Dodgers, uh, I can't back them confidently. I don't think Landon Knack is, is, is ready for these kind of moments. This game's going to be a big game. Um, this Padres team, obviously, um, I'm pretty sure they're locked in the wild card. I don't think they can even, uh, they'd have to like lose the last six games of the season to be knocked out. Um, that being said, I just think they win this game. I like Michael King, like a strong performance out of him here against the Dodgers lineup. Um, and this game's a pick em. So give me the Padres on the money line here. That does clear our slate though. If you guys do me a favor, drop a like, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys are playing. Before I hop off here though, I got you guys my three best bets. Number one, Dimebacks on the money line. That's I love it. Absolutely love that. Uh, number two, the Padres on the money line. Absolutely love that. And number three, we are going to go with that uh, Tariq Skubal, six or seven Ks in the Tigers money line, whichever one gets you uh, even money. So as always, you can get all my official plays at goldboys.com. If you have a gambling problem, don't want to hurt a gambler. Thank you, guys.